Hey guys, uh, welcome to this first um, instalment of this um, Magento documentation, Terry. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the installation guide. Um, well, we're going to go through uh, a couple of parts of that. I'm not going to do the full one because there's an installation guide for the uh, like extension developers and the contributors. Um, and I'm not going to go that deep into it. What I am going to do is I'm going to show you the other two ways that you would normally um, install Magento if you were developing for a client um, or for yourself. So before you do anything, um, if you haven't got an account at Magento Marketplace, you need to go to marketplace.magento.com. Um, you need to pause the video now and go and sign up because you won't be able to progress so uh, off you go all right cool so now you're back um, you need to go to your account page and you need to go to my access keys and you need to create a new key now I'm gonna go and create these keys um, but I'm not going to actually put these keys out on the internet because anyone could then just use these keys. Okay, so um, so I'll generate these new keys, but I'm going to do it outside on my other screen. And that's just going to take a little minute. Just want to point out that we're on 2.1, um, this version, when we start this series. Okay, so I have my keys here. Um, so what I will do is I will just hide this one. Okay, so what I've done is I've I've um, inspected the, so I've just basically hidden this from you. So you get um, a key, and this is your username and your private key is the password. Okay, so that's what you use. All right. Um, so I'll just put this to one side, and I might just actually just get a little notepad for myself. I'm going to need these keys for later so just put them in a notepad or just keep these keys to one side public okay All right so once you've got them then you can actually make a start um, so it says here, hi, we're glad you're among the 240,000 merchants worldwide who put their trust in our e-commerce software. Whether that's talking about Magento 2 or not, I don't know. Um, we've gathered some information to help you get started with Magento and with your Magento installation. We have some resources here to help you get started using the e-commerce platform of the future, Magento 2. It's what we do. Okay, so um, I had a go at this at work during my lunch break. Um, I didn't quite get it right. I, well, in fact, I tried yesterday as well, and I didn't quite get it right. I've been through the environment. You're going to need a web server. You're going to need PHP. Um, it's, and you're going to need MySQL, okay, or um, or something um, like Persona or or um, what's the other one called? I've forgotten. Um, so. Once you've done that, 
Um, I would I would recommend opening these links in a new in a new tab. Uh, and what I'm doing for that, I'm just clicking my middle mouse button because uh, you can end up going round and round in circles a little bit if you don't. So here is some extra information about um, what you're about to be doing, uh, and I'll show you. Um, and these sections show and hide. I didn't notice this to begin with. I think these arrows might need to be a bit bigger. Um, I was a bit lost for a bit. So yeah, these go up and down. Um, so uh, that's something to be aware of. So back to here, I went to choose how to get the Magento software and you get a table. And there's, there's basically, There's two that we're mostly interested in for kind of daily development for um, just getting hold of a copy. Um, if you're going to be contributing, um, then um, you're going to want to follow these instructions, okay? And and if you're not very technically minded, then you want to take a look at these. You want to take a look at these instructions, but we're going to we're going to focus on these first two here. Um, so, the easy installation. Let's just get rid of that. Is basically what we're going to do is we're going to download the file and then extract it. Um, so I'll just set this off downloading first, and then. As that's downloading, we'll go back and do the composer one. So, version 2.1 is what we're on. Um, get the smallest one, like that. Click download, and it will start in the corner automatically for you. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that going there. Um, this one is uh, slightly more involved but it's not too bad okay so you have obviously two editions You've got community edition and the enterprise edition and the enterprise edition is the one that you pay for um, and if you have composer installed you should be able to open up a terminal and type in composer like that and get a list of options all right so first steps as an integrator you want to manage each of your magento core components and third-party components using the component manager and system upgrade to do so you start by creating a composer project from my meta package the meta package installs each component so it can be centrally managed after installation now what this is good for is for mainly for like development servers um where you can just run uh, you could probably um do something like set up a cron job or or maybe you want to just um do it manually it's up to you but you can you can run composer update and it will go and update any components um uh, automatically for you um, and you don't have to like individually download things and check things yourself so it's very good for that so this is handy for that kind of for that kind of scenario um, so I'll show you how to do this you just create that copy that there so I, I will want to go into my www folder, okay? I'm going to make a directory called m2 um, composer. Let's give it the domain name, domain name actually. Local dot m2 Composer dot 
Um, what should we use? Let's do that the other way around. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dot local. Okay. M2. And. Or what you can do actually. Let's just remove that. Remove DIR. Is we can paste this in and then put the name of the, the directory in that we want. So M2 Composer. Otherwise, you'd be replacing that there with um, just a single dot if you were in the directory that you already wanted to be in. So we'll have that as our domain name. Now, um, first thing is um, we've got. Um, we've got an issue because um, it's complaining about a lack of SSL um, availability so just expand this the open accession is required for SSL TSX protection but it is not available so if you remember if we oops that should be an L if we open up our PHP ini file, and what's the name of it again? Open SSL. So Control F, Open SSL, and we just need to enable that like that. Okay, and then we can try again. So now it's available, and now we're going to be asked for those keys that we set up before. So I'm going to grab my public key and stick that in. And then I'm going to get the private key, copy, and stick that in. I'm doing Control Shift and V um, to paste those in. And then it will authenticate me, hopefully. Yes, don't want to have to do that every time. Yeah, so I want um, I want to store the credentials for that. Okay, and then it starts downloading the um, the package, the packages, and you'll see that they they all come down individually. Now, the first time it does this, it's slower um, because it has to download them all. But if it's got them in in its cache, then it'll just go, bub, 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 you know, and just load it in from a cache unless there's a newer version, and then it'll download the newer version. But your first time is always your slowest time. Um, so whilst we wait for that, we are going to. Just open up a new tab and I'll get the full path for our for our installation here. Okay. And then oops. And then we'll go into the nginx.confs directory that I made in the last video. Okay, and I'm going to put in my first um, uh, configuration file here. So, new file. And if we just save this as. Conf. Make everything the same. Name everything the same. And I have prepared already on my gist account a um, a configuration file here. Okay. So let me just I'll get the raw. Control A. Control C back into here and paste all this in. Right, let me go through this a little bit. I'm 
I'm just going to put the font size up a little bit. Oh, it is up a little bit. Okay. Right, so if we look through this. Now, the first time I installed this, uh, when I tried to visit the setup page, I just got a blank screen. Now, what this is copied from, this is copied from something that they've put with it for a vagrant box so it's not quite what we want the first problem with this is in the vagrant one we've got this upstream thing here now it'll work in this configuration file but then if you try and add it again in another configuration file it's going to complain at you you can't have this twice so this is something really that you want in the default um, but first of all we'll um, Oh no, we know our path because we got it in the default. So I'm just going to cut that section out and I will open up this and stick this in here. I think I need to go inside HTTP. Okay, and we know what the path is because we have it there. So I'm going to copy that into there. And now this can say fast CGI backend on there. Okay, so that is referring to this. Is there anything else I want to change in there? No. Nope. So I'll save that with a password and we'll do sudo nginx t and this will tell us if everything's okay. Okay, so everything's alright there. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an alias because a system CTL is a lot to type. Um, so I'm just going to change my dot Z H R C. This might be bash R C for you if you're not using this. If you're using just the bog standard bash that you'd normally get. Um, you you might be doing this to your bash RC, okay? So here I have an alias. I've got an, an alias here for this webcam thing because I don't want to be typing that in to to get this little thing up. Um, so after that, alias, I'm just going to put sys equals. Nope. <laughs> um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, sys system. CTL okay save that and close that down and what we can do is say sys and then if I do restart yes it's working restart nginx service now I'm just using tab to auto complete most of that so it's a pretty quick process now <coughs> So that's all done. Let's just make sure. What I want to do actually is I want an incognito. Put that over there. No, I don't need to be showing that. Um, Localhost. Root. Root. This is all working. Okay. So from there so now I've moved this part out of out of the way basically it will now filter down through to this one um, so the rest of this we just need our path which we got 
here, didn't we? Where did we get it? Here we go. So we want the full path. So I'll copy that. Okay, and if you've got one in your repo somewhere, you might want to just include it. Um, you just might want to just include a configuration rather than um, doing separate ones. Um, and then, if when you're going to slash setup, um, you can comment this out if it's um, if you're okay. But a lot of people are finding that they need this for setup to work. Um, I, I certainly need it to work, so um, I don't un completely understand why. Um, but I've added this line. This is an addition to what's in the vagrant box one. Um, and the other thing that we might want to do is actually set our mode to production because Magento um, auto generates PHP files in production mode so I'm gonna set it here it is against the advice that you're given um, but if I I just wanna I just wanna be able to set it in here that's just what I'm happiest with but it is against the official advice okay um, and then everything else on this file should be hunky dory. So I'm just going to save that. Um, I just want to go back to my nginx.conf. I don't know if that's in the right place. Is it inside HTTP? Yes, it is. Because from there it's going to be like server, 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 server from afterwards. So. I don't want to mess that up. So run a test. Okay. Everything is fine according to that. So I'll minimize that. Um I won't I'll just come back to here. Okay, this is complained about something. Okay. Problem one, installation of we're going to satisfiable EXT G D. Alright, so extension G D, so we're gonna to have to go through these um things. I'm gonna go through them one by one. Um so have I got my other one? So find G D. So, so that's the first one. All right, we're probably going to get another error message again. So let me just clear this. And I'll do this one again. Once the project is set up, I could have probably got away with just doing going into the folder and doing composer install or update. Um, but I want to do, I want to just start again. I'll just, oh, sorry, I need to remove that folder. Okay. So, but I want to, I want to do it right from the beginning. I could probably go into the folder and do composer update uh, composer install composer space install and it would carry on from where it left off but in in this case we're just going to view what it should look like um clean from you know clean from the beginning so mcrypt we need so take that out of course you don't have to do this every every time just you know just make a little note now of which ones you want and then you can go in and, and make sure that you have all those things uh, installed um, I think I will just put this to one side like that and 
just always on top for the moment. So I'll remove that again. And let's see if we get anything else that it complains about. Okay. So icon V. So we need that one. It's a shame it doesn't tell you all of them in one go, really, but never mind. So I should say that. Don't need to restart PHP FPM at the moment because, and yep, I know I will put my license in in a moment. So let's remove that. Uh, yeah, I don't need to restart PHP FPM at the moment because en this is not Nginx using it, we're just using it by the command line, so we don't need to restart anything. Um, the In the command line, PHP loads up a fresh and loads in the configuration every time you ask for it, and Composer will ask for it each time. So, And I know there's a few more. Have a beer, read a book. So, into INTL, which I think is just international, is it? INTL. That one. It's good practice to have the least amount of things running that you actually need, um, especially on your production server. XSL. I'll put a time code if you want to skip all this. I'll, I'll put in a time code for you to skip it. Z, isn't it? It's going to be at the end, you idiot. <laughs> right. I think that might be it, guys. I think we might be there. You see that it's installing that one from cache and how quickly it does it. And once you've got all the other ones. Ah, now, now we're going, you see. We've got everything that we need. Okay, so on in our downloads folder, I don't need that to be on top anymore. We've got this. Um, let me just clean this up. Okay. Right. I just don't want to um, clutter you all up 
so here we have this basically um, so um, we can just quite easily do this the command uh, the GUI way so um, let's call this um, m2 zipped dot local create and we can have a look at the differences if there are any um, in a minute uh, I'll go back to my downloads if we just open this up and have a look okay so basically control C control V into there extract here That's not quite what I wanted. Oh well. Let's just rename that folder. And uh, we could then, really, we could go into here and then we could add this path to um, the configuration file it'd be fine um, but um, in in the command line you'd be doing if I just go up one move that to the wastebasket in the command line I, um, Tar BZ2. I can't remember the flag. I know it starts with tar extract. J, F, and then the file name, and then to the current directory that I'm in. And if we watch this folder, oh no. Like that, sorry. You can see here that it puts it in a more it puts it into the current directory and then um we can delete that file and then we're um we're all set to go in this folder this is this is kind of already now so um let's have a look at our composer version of it so I'm gonna move that down one and get rid of that. I think this is very nearly done. So it's download all of these are like separate repositories and they've all got the versions, you see. And that gives you that gives you a good advantage over over just having just um a set of files locally. Now, I think I'll be experimenting in the one that I just extracted because I don't want to be setting up um anything in particular just for for this for this way of doing things um, so when I'm going through the documentation and learning I'll be, I'll be using the extracted version um, because I'm just it's just a playground I'm just messing around it, it, nothing really matters in there um, but for for more advanced things um, using this um, using this uh, package dependency um, way of doing things is really the way that you want to go uh, and what you would do if, if you developed anything you would develop a module um, and you would and you would have that module available somewhere uh, and you would include that in your uh, if I show you I think we can get rid of this for the moment 
Um, so if I say if I go to the other two, compose a local one. Um, okay, so you see in here you get composer.json. Okay, and that's got required dev, and these are things. This is for like the development stuff, um, the version that you that you want. If you if you change that to a star, it would just update the uh, to the newest one, um, and then you could require your own packages in there. Um, in development and stuff okay but that's advanced but just if you don't know how to use it then don't worry about this uh, too much at the moment but set some time aside to learn about it um, um, and uh, and understand what Compose is doing if, if you're not too sure what, what it is um, because uh, it's you know it's it's the right way to go okay so you can see here, if we open up another one of these, okay, uh, open up another one of these, and we're going to the composer one, and we're going to the zipped one, and it's not really any different, is it? Okay, you end up with the same thing, but the difference is is you've got one is being controlled by Composer uh, and um, uh, and then the extractive version um, uh, you just you've just got the most recent available download. Okay, um, I think in. Thinking here. No, sorry. Just be with you in a minute. If I just put that up. Why is that not working? I'm going to close that down. That's control K and B. Okay, so I've got. There we are, that's what I wanted. Um, we have got a composer in here so you could actually navigate into this and run composer upgrade and it would actually start working and stuff okay so basically there that's the two ways of downloading and getting hold of things we were working in this one originally and that's what we made the configuration for so if we go back to our documentation And we've got instructions there about uh, Composer, that's fine. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to set the permissions. Okay. Now on a local machine you're going to be two users basically because you're going to be the user, the Engi Nginx users and that user is, I'll just check my time. 40 minutes and um, that user is um, normally WW data but in my case it's HTTP because it's different in um, it's different in Arch Linux uh, so I'm gonna do this one and it says complete the following task in order so it talks about shared group 
Create a file system, Magento file system owner and give the user a strong password. Find the web server. This is more talking about the deployment, uh, the production server kind of side of things. So what you would do is you would make a user, um, let's say Magento. Magento, make a user called Magento. I mean, I wouldn't do that in a production server because let me just move this over to the one side. I wouldn't do that in a production server because it's a bit predictable. Um, but um, you would have a user for your one website, um, and then um, you and the other user uh, that you would uh, normally um, that the web server would normally use. Um, kind of share the files between them in one group so if we look in here we can see that at the moment it's Andy and users okay and if we say groups HTTP you'll notice that um, it's also part of users and in the last video this I set this up so you want to go and see my environment setup video um, and what I will do in this case in the development is while this is correct um, for for the production server here what I'm going to do is I'm going to change if we go down to these and set ownerships We're going to give the group right permissions. Um, and we're going to give um, on each file. And we're going to give the directory right permissions to the group users. Um, and they've put an S in there to make it sticky, okay? Which means anything else that's created in that directory will also kind of keep those um, same permissions. You won't have to keep resetting them and resetting them. So if we just go down one, I'm going to paste this in. Careful, careful when you're doing that. You don't want a carriage return. Um, oh no! Just cancel that. I want to be inside like it said in the first place it did actually tell me didn't it so I'm gonna paste that in okay and it will sort all those things out so what this says it says find um, var which is like there vendor public static, public media, app, etc, um, files and give right permission to the group, okay, which is what I'm going to do. And then the next one is it's going to find those directories and also make them writable but also make it sticky like that so that's what that type D stands for and this public directory this is you no longer serve from an index I mean there's an index PHP there but that's kind of for people who are not kind of expecting a setup but you serve your website from the pub directory from the public directory that's really the way of doing things so all these files are kind of underneath the what what you know the entry point for for the end user and then it, it adds a layer of protection okay so now that's all done let's go to the next step okay so now we can do the um, installation apparently so I'm going to do the setup wizard one um, and this documentation gets a bit confusing it starts giving you links um, to run but um, 
basically we want to run the setup and you just go to forward slash setup so we should be able to go to now oh no there's one thing I need to do um, if we just copy that there and then sublime etc hosts this is the hosts file I want to tell my computer that if I try to visit that domain it means this okay and I should put that there as well okay so I'll just save this and now we should be able to visit HTTP slash slash there is one thing I've forgotten to do but um, just ignore that for now okay so it's just hitting it's just hitting the default so let's check the configuration so sublime jacks.confs Okay, that's right, but what I've failed to do is put the server name in. So save that. Back to here, and we can now do sys restart. Oh no, I can't because that one hasn't got that configuration loaded, so we do it here. There should be space left on the device. And I think this has to do with watch files. I notify. I need to increase the size of this. I might as well show you this. Oh, come on. Oh, go away then. Okay. Yeah, that's it. If we this file here, let's just check that that exists. Yeah. So if I concatenate that, you'll see I've got eight one nine two. Need that to be a higher number. Um. So we'll do the short term fix, and we'll just echo a bigger number into there. Okay, and I probably need to sudo for that. <clears throat> Sorry, sudo dash i. It's going to be really fussy about doing that. And then we'll just. that file no that's not the one cancel let's just exit um, locate
from version two, so it not apply to that anymore. It will only apply those from system C now to, since the settings are shipped to uh, anyway, which is not version two. Okay, so I saw that file. So CD. There's nothing in there. Um, so I'll name it that. And this is just to make sure that it doesn't come back when next time I restart my computer. I'm going to stick this in there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And I don't want to be root anymore. Okay. So now I should be able to restart Nginx without it complaining. Okay, that's great. Right, so. Let's try this again. That's not found. Okay, I'm going to pause. Okay, so if you see here, I'm getting like a I'm getting a permission denied, so somewhere along the tree it's not actually getting to it and I've and I've I've had a little look around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sudo as user http. Okay. C D home. So, um, so, exit. Um, sudo chown recursively uses. I actually gave um, I actually handed this over to users and we've got read execute right read execute read execute unless two pairs of local okay so I've actually handed the whole thing over to HTTP to try and make sure now let's see if we can get there still not found okay I'm gonna pause again Okay guys, I think I've found my problem. If you see here my um, Andy folder, there's one for the kids as well for them to do homework. Um, I, there's no permission for anyone. Um, so I just need to say plus group um, uh, no, sorry, group plus read Andy to home no home and then if I do that okay so now if I log in as the HTTP user CD home 
CD Andy. Oh, I'm joking. part of users why can't I do it oh execute idiot need an execute in there to actually open up Should sort it now. Oh, now. There we go. So it was a permissions issue. <laughs> We're about an hour into this video. Um, so, okay, so there we are. So it, now it's working for us uh, in that regard. Um, basically, we need to start a readiness check. Okay, so now it wants to change some settings. So it wants us to. Oh, by the way, uh, another thing that I did is if I exit out of that, I forgot a command um, inside your directory. You also need to do where is it? You also need to do this one. You also need to be able to execute bin magento and that's uh, like um uh like a file uh, that um runs like if you if you ever use mage run um it's like that but it's a it's a command line file okay um uh, so basically um i don't think i did that so i have done that um but back to this it's wanting us to in here change wanting us to change this oops no so find do that and we should restart php fpm so sys restart it's not on that one Close that down. Tab sys restart nginx service. Um, oh, sorry, restart PHP. try again okay so next we're going to add a database so let's um, just make one and um, PHP my admin root and new 
do this anywhere you want, whatever database program you've got. But I'm just going to call this Magento 2. Create. Copy that. I'll just paste it into there and then take it out again. Make sure I'm not taking anything strange across. Uh, and then back to here. You go away. Database name. Okay, next. So we're going back to here. Um, P D O. That should really have been checked in the first place on the first screen. Magento, please. Thank you. Um, so let's go back to terminal, restart my PHP, next, I'm just going to have it as normal admin because it doesn't really matter in terms of security. GMT will be fine. I'm going to have British pounds. And United Kingdom. And just anything. next and install now okay so that's going to install the database for me uh, so I'm just going to pause this again okay so that finished I can should be able to launch the admin I just have to excuse um Callum, he's uh, he keeps dying, I think, and then I should be able to log in. There, and if we have a look at the storefront, yes, I know I've not got any cron job, thank you. I'll just look at the front of the store, make sure that's giving me something. It's going to take a while the first time. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to stop here with this video. Um, because that was the video with all problems okay in the next video which I'm going to do straight away I'm going to then install on the one that I'm actually going to develop on and I'm going to install the um, the the data the the sample data with it as well okay so um, I'll see you in the next video bye bye